Hi friends, this is course on risk-based engineering and today's topic is organizational and quality aspects of PRA that is probabilistic risk assessment. In previous lecture, uh, we discussed the background uh, information and uh, what is the uh, different modules of PRA that is level 1 probabilistic risk assessment, level 2 probabilistic risk assessment, level 3 probabilistic risk assessment and uh, uh, how uh, these studies uh, they are useful for real time application development and specifically I had discussed what is the role of PRA uh, in development of risk informed risk based applications. Finally, we came to a, a discussion that uh, risk informed and risk based approach uh, they, are, they are finding wider application um, whether it is a regulatory framework or whether it is a design or operation ecosystem. Uh, in, this, uh, in this lecture, that is, I will cover two major areas that is organizational feature that is required for conducting a uh, PRA study uh, and how quality should be controlled, quality assurance aspect or quality uh, technical aspects that we will be discussing in this lecture. Why? Because PRA uh, as such is a very resource intensive activity. So here uh, management approval or consent or even uh, initiatives are important uh, for, sec for developing a quality PRA I would say. So uh, with this let us start the uh, discussion on uh, quality and the outline of this uh, uh, presentation will be organizational and management aspect of PRA. Uh, typical objective scope because it is uh, being systematic, uh, it is proper to uh, decide what is the objective of uh, this project, PRA project and what should be the scope. Uh, why? Because uh, we want to uh, translate this studies output into some application, real time application. Uh, first it will be uh, safety improvement, then second thing uh, could be some plant related uh, operational aspects uh, where we want to do some prioritization identification. So uh, if the quality attributes are there it becomes easier for us to communicate our results also. Now quality assurance in PRA, actually quality assurance is one word like it is uh, applied to hardware component so our activities. Uh, similarly, uh, quality assurance in PRA it applies to its activity and its applications. Similarly, major feature of QA program for a PRA study we will be discussing in this one. And then a, uh, just in one slide, what are the uh, codes and standards uh, available, uh, available for assuring quality aspects uh, because uh, finally for sake of completing the topic, uh, this particular information was required uh, and idea is that uh, people who are listening to this lectures, they themselves are interested in uh, developing either for their industry or for their own system uh, uh, PRA model or risk informed uh, models uh, to get benefit from this particular uh, uh, mode of uh, activities. So, uh, organization and management aspect, uh, you can see organization and man management aspect, it involves human teams, it involves targets, it involves the uh, cognitive capability of uh, human analysis and all, it requires a documentation. So in short, uh, I am showing this picture uh, and of course the knowledge base and uh, the best part is. Uh, if there is no, no networking, then no project can be completed. So people should work uh, in a communication mode, interacting more frequently to ensure the success of the project. And same way, if we have a scope and objective defined and targets are defined, the study, uh, the efforts are also saved or I would say efforts are invested in the right place uh, at the same time quality of the study also. Uh, is better. So uh, my experience is 
before starting a project, uh, an expert in that field or a couple of people, they should develop a project report. Why project report? In project report, uh, when we develop, we define the scope, objective, resources required, then what should be the uh, uh, final report, uh, what are the tools and methods required. Um, so uh, once we uh, bring out all those uh, things in the project report, uh, it becomes easy, easier uh, to deal with the management, uh, what you, you want to do or what management want us to do and uh, uh, what is the uh, main power and expertise required, what are the softwares that are required. If these things are uh, straightened out in the beginning and of course what are the results that are expected and uh, if there are some uh, uh, reference quality standards for performing PSA and for its application then, then it becomes easier because uh, the, when the modular uh, modular uh, approach is adopted for the projects uh, then that like for one system one report will be there then at the end of that if there is a checklist which says what are the activities related to that has uh, has been put and how far we have achieved it it becomes easier for a person who was not directly involved just one look at the checklist and he can tell yeah 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 they have met all the attributes of the VRA or they are they have not met one or two so it gives a, a scope uh, it opens a scope for opening and focusing where the review should be done or uh, let us accept it as it is instead of uh, somebody at other end peer review and he is trying to understand what else has been done to, uh, some uh, good number of interaction meetings goes on and then finally so this project report helps uh, in uh, sort of uh, bringing everybody to one level what is what is uh, required what is expected uh, and you know how it, it should be done uh, done and who should be involved then role of management as i mentioned uh, uh, is very important for successful completion of the uh, project because finally it is the management which will approve the approve the uh, resources in the at the same time in decision making um, sometimes when the project goes on and the management itself is so proactive that the insights of the project uh, they start using it and by the time project and its uh, project uh, project is uh, finished that is pra project or you know risk informed project is finished the uh, changes suggested in the report at modular level have been implemented uh, this is something uh, when when actually works in the in the in the on the project uh, it is a, it is a very positive situation that um, the person that is stakeholder he was taking the insight from various modules and uh, they were implementing it or modification mod modification were implemented and by the time project report completed even regulators within uh, within uh, a, a couple of uh, months uh, we got the required approval so uh, this is the this is the uh, importance of project report and the individual reports which which are done as part of the project then resources resources should be placed they cannot be compromised for doing a good job and a quality job then documentation um, uh, host of documents are required performing a PSA project so there should be uh, there should be a channel which is open for supplying the document and people are using it and then finally it is the teamwork team that is very important so team is getting all the information and they are implementing and they are interacting uh, with the uh, domain expert on a this is a very important point any PRA done and uh, domain is, uh, expert that means suppose if you are doing for industry X the industry X expert should be involved in the project directly or indirectly because uh, the as built as operated aspect of uh, the plant will get translated into the model only when domain experts are involved. Otherwise, our studies will be one uh, and the plant operation and maintenance is something different. So, it is not uh, to sometimes it happens that if we depend too much on the generic data, then we are wondering whether it is for our plant. This is where the management aspect they come into the picture, and the second thing is if we take it by, uh, there, there are some special effect, uh, uh, aspects in PRA, uh, a, a good amount of R&D is required, R&D or even if we say developmental work because some components will have to be tested. So if it is made uh, uh, a priori 
um, into the, our project report that so many number of components requiring so many test facilities. So the efforts can start and by the time we, uh, the project goes on, uh, so R&D uh, whatever is required or testing whatever is required, uh, a prior provision should be made through the project report or management approach. The, now, the, this is plant data and uh, uh, collection. In a PRA project, if it is for the operating plant, the plant specific data should be used to the extent possible because as I mentioned, it should reflect as built as operated plant uh, PRA. So, uh, and these efforts, uh, again my second uh, experience will be that data collection and analysis and finally uh, translating them into the useful input of our PRA, uh, it takes a if 50 to 70 percent resources because the quality of data uh, can only uh, ensure a quality output. And then applicable software. These studies they require applica uh, application software which are available uh, commercial off the shelf uh, uh, tools uh, which has to be bought and they should be benchmarked. It is very important that they are benchmarked so, they, uh, so that um, later stage of PRA, we should not come across surprises actually. So, and PRA team. PRA team should have expert from all the areas uh, required. Uh, they should be domain people. Like uh, if I say, if you are doing uh, PRA for an operating plant, then uh, the, the maintenance people, operation uh, members, then uh, PR, PR, from PRA side, PRA expert, data analysis expert, they should all be part of the team. Uh, if they are not there, then it is a communication gap will remain and uh, um, a channel will not be there for us to get further uh, clarification and information. Review agencies. Review agencies are inherent part of this analysis because finally uh, when, the, when an organization is developing a PRA project, uh, then it has to finally go to the regulator also. Uh, for approval. So first it is the internal review, then peer review, then regulator. These are various uh, three stage, uh, three stage uh, uh, program for review. So and after that only uh, whether, the, whether the study is authorized uh, study um, or it, it form part of the plant records, th those questions can be answered actually. Now uh, uh, this is just to help and it is not, it is sort of indicative only. When I, I want to perform a PRA project, I, uh, PRA projects are performed at different level, you know. Uh, first it could be, uh, first it could be conceptual stage, uh, first it could be conceptual stage, uh, it could be design stage, it could be commissioning stage or it could be operational stage. So generally and it could be uh, even uh, siting, uh, uh, siting, for siting also. So, uh, we have to, the different type of activities, uh, th this thing are there. Let's say if it is being done at the conceptual stage, then the requirement will be, the objective function, uh, objective should be that initial project approval. Initial project approval, that means um, what are the uh, resources required uh, in terms of land and all those things because you know in uh, some safety critical system exclusion zones are also the part of it. So and then finally regulatory approval. So objective and this function should be very well defined uh, then the scope. Now um, once it is done at the conceptual stage uh, a limited scope level 1 PRA should be sufficient and, that, uh, and, uh, and then the result could be extended to limited scope level 2 and level 3 to understand the uh, impact in the public domain. Okay? So the, this kind of uh, scope should be worked out and uh, probably it may or may not require depending on the zone, uh, seismic studies, uh, fire, flood and this kind of thing, um, they will be they are dictated by the uh, site characteristic actually. So uh, and then um, these two, uh, again if we see these two uh, uh, metrics, objective and uh, scope, uh, objective will extend further to the, sorry, scope will extend uh, to the next slide also. But let us see, for design stage, 
it is called design evolution basically the design teams they communicate uh, across uh, uh, from one team to another team and a team to the bosses and uh, uh, lower teams and all that so a communication becomes uh, possible design evolution becomes and here the most important thing is balance of plant studies are uh, documented here that the risk emanating from one area is not dominating or by one system is not dominating so um, there is a uh, there is a there is a way to uh, decide resources and all those things to how to spend uh, and then next is commissioning uh, stage then commissioning stage is a pre pre operational stage and here all revision and document are submit uh, other than the peer and uh, in internal review should be submitted to the re regulator here, even here also this these are required uh, but then here before the plant goes into the operation uh, the the involvement of regulator uh, is uh, is one of the one of the dis decisive factor here actually you know so so regulatory consenting approval technical specific you know, we should come to be with this document emergency operating procedures and assessment of safety issues and all so uh, these are the commissioning stage uh, review along with the design review and uh, whatever commissioning reports are coming over there and uh, each report threadbare it is discussed uh, it's quite possible that uh, on pra tool uh, they are evaluated what are the what is the risk potential and then finally we go to the operation stage so operation stage uh, when we are, we are there performance and safety evaluation if a plant is operating then performance and safety evaluation periodic activity is a periodic activity regulatory review is periodic activity and risk based onm risk monitors um, the pra enables development of a risk monitor for operational environment so if risk monitor is there in the control room uh, this becomes a, one of the uh, tool uh, for analyzing different scenario at the same time it uh, regulators might ask that uh, simulate this uh, particular scenario or a new insight and then uh, get back so operational stage re reviews and along with this there are different documents also they are reviewed whether whether they are they are following that living document characteristic or not whether it is safety report emergency operating procedure so this uh, regulatory teams they review then regarding scope uh, you can see here initially it was uh, level 1 uh, that uh, we were uh, we were thinking about um, yeah level 1 the level 1 uh, design stage level 1 level 2 is desirable with internal external and all, all that and then finally commissioning stage we require level 1 level 2 uh, level 3 is uh, desirable so um, uh, of course level 1 is required but level 2 should be performed and scope should include uh, other than the reactor core spool for uh, for nuclear system and power operation low low power and shutdown state uh, so this is the uh, kind of activities that has to um, go on uh, for this one now if we go to the uh, next slide uh, let us say uh, purpose purpose is what uh, for uh, siting during siting it is basically site characteristic is one thing and then second thing is uh, uh, the what is the relation between public uh, perception public impact and all that that is there these these are the answer that are, that has to be find out because uh, it doesn't report or in, uh, doesn't remain in the uh, technical domain it goes to other domains also um, beyond regular to administrator also so it becomes easier uh, if this uh, uh, purposes are met so design and siting concept evaluation and then including public organization so now uh, during design stage design optimization is one of the biggest advantage because as i said pra uh, is a integrated model so design optimization and configuration management and layouts uh, they can be worked out very e easily um, commissioning stage integrated assessment balance of plant studies and regulatory review um, these are the these are the activities and then um, we have operational stages or integrated assessment continues and uh, leaving pra risk monitor application of risk based you could be in uh, risk based uh, in service inspection it could be in service uh, uh, management um, evaluation of our operating procedures host of activities um, they can go on and uh, on a risk monitor uh, it can be evaluated to understand the uh, safety level of the plant uh, and how the tools which are there maintenance tools uh, operation tools Uh, they are working and their evaluation including our training program so th these things are very useful and input required is a project report uh, at designing stage 
applicable standard quality as we go, as we go towards operation stage the document required are um, you know, increases so commissioning report safety report design report basis report operating manual emergency operating manual all these things should they come into the uh, play <coughs> and you utilization uh, reliability data source because plan uh, when it is a conceptual stage uh, to the uh, design stage uh, we don't have data uh, operating experience so generic data generic data and uh, even here also commissioning but then as the plant gets into the operation and uh, sufficient time is passed then plant specific data should be used so that we have a living pra model of psa or risk monitor uh, which is updated at uh, 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 at regular frequency so uh, so th that's how you can see a risk monitor which is reflecting uh, risk monitor is, monitor is nothing but any uh, plant configuration that if we change uh, it uh, the how the uh, the end result of uh, pra uh, are affected our risk level uh, getting affected and then there are some national and international criteria that changes should not be more than uh, the in terms of percentage so if it is less than that then uh, it has to be handled at certain level internally or even if required uh, um, you know regulators can. but if it is more than that definitely regulators should approval uh, regulatory approval is required so these kind of things are there and uh, they provide a very elegant mechanism for ensuring plant safety now uh, quality aspects of pra uh, the general thing what we have is that uh, the project uh, this uh, one is the project report uh, which 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 gets gets us going and there itself um, which sources for quality on they should be taken that uh, is defined and uh, and it comes basically from national and international standards so what best suits our things uh, but definitely for any country the national standards have to be complied okay and the procedure to be followed and uh, um, uh, like uh, one of the biggest thing which uh, i have been mentioning time and again that the, uh, there should be always a attribute for quality data so data uh, if it is not good results also will be uh, having higher uncertainty and it can become to uh, to an extent that it may or may not be useful also uh, the aspect that we need to uh, uh, ensure is there are two ma major categories one is the quality assurance program that means how the activity should be performed as part of the pre psa that is called quality assurance program and second thing is technical input that means in pra uh, what are the technical input like suppose if there is a, uh, a higher level requirement that the initiating event list should be as complete as possible so that means to ensure that what all we have done there are four or five mode that we will be discussing and how how to what extent we are able to meet those criteria if we record that it will reflect on our uh, quality and that basically inspire uh, everyone who, who are involved to get the best out of uh, for our data actually now uh, as i said quality assurance is basically part of uh, pra project management so that uh, it meets our national and international standard and same thing applies to technical quality assurance uh, attribute also um, because these attributes determine uh, any sub activity like uh, i am modeling level uh, class 4 power or i am uh, class 3 power that is emergency power now if i attach a checklist at the end of my report that the quality attributes uh, as far as uh, class 3 uh, data uh, what is uh, what is the quantum of generic, generic data what is the quantum of plant specific data um, um, uh, what are the uh, test data what is our plant operating experience and all those things if we if we say if we say in a pra study the only 10% uh, of data are used from uh, plant specific source uh, definitely it raises a question but if i say that 50 to 60% of the data i have used from plant specific or even uh, most of the data i have used from plant specific source it encourages everyone to look at that because it is reflecting as built as operated plant now it uh, decision making support uh, you, uh, you know it is a very important thing if i have a quality uh, quality psa i have, have that confidence in me uh, for uh, decision making whether it is pra alone itself or 
if I develop a PRA application. So uh, the decision making aspect become more uh, consolidated uh, with uh, that comes with the higher confidence. Um, so these kind of things, um, like simple thing, if I use a PRA software and if I have not benchmarked it, now it, it will have a global effect. So. Uh, these are some of the higher level attribute and if at all I have benchmarked it, how I have benchmarked it, whether I have documented it. So these questions if we answer it becomes for everyone to see that we have followed the uh, highest quality assurance record. The organizational aspect of QA uh, are like this PRA working group. This is one of the most important, the stronger is the team, the overall expertise which is accommodated in a PRA working group. The results will be better and quality assurance will have some attribute the what should be the constitution of uh, PRA, what should be the uh, timeline of uh, PRA Co uh, and then uh, what is the definition of uh, obje objective and scope where they are clearly defined or is there any, any integrity. E uh, uh, are the objectives addressing the resources that are available because uh, if they are not uh, um, not matching, uh, then probably it will be difficult to meet the objective and scope also. Uh, scope is designed because what we want out of this uh, PRA, what kind of benefit we want to draw, is it for regulatory purpose, uh, for compliance or is it that we want to develop some application uh, and if we want to develop some application, then the scope will will ex will also uh, go that way or it will expand, it will require uh, further level of review. And finally, of course, approval will come from regulator only. So it is a win-win situation for regulator also, for, for the uh, stakeholder plant also, uh, if the quality attribute checklist is attached with the, for the uh, any sub-module of PRA. And then quality conformance, a decision should be taken uh, which standard. Now regulator has have to understand uh, what uh, documents you have referred, what is your benchmark or what is uh, our uh, criteria. So if we say that this particular PRA is meeting the quality standards uh, or attributes from uh, from our regulatory agency uh, specified by regulatory agency or specified by the um, International Atomic Energy Agency or any other country which has got this document available or we develop ourselves uh, this document internally and uh, get it approval from our uh, counterpart that is regulators and use it. So it, it really works uh, for both for regulator it reduces work for us also uh, it, it in fact it reduces our work and at the same time uh, the additional energy goes into the area where it should go actually. Um, general guideline for quality assurance are like this as I discussed a, a group should be constituted strong uh, verification validation of computer code or it, it might even extend to benchmarking also objective and uh, scope quality conformance which will come from earlier uh, discussed three slides data quality assurance program um, then plans and schedules uh, because project report should provide uh, our schedule also and um, if they are not meeting over a period of time, uh, what are the factors? Uh, it will be on, on a uh, time to time, it will be checked. Uh, multi level re uh, review. Normally, three level reviews are required internal, peer review, and regulatory review. Plans and criteria uh, um, on a special aspects like human factor, uncertainty, and sensitivity analysis. Because certain modules, even in risk assessment, they, are, uh, they need more work. So, uh, as I said, R&D is one component. We can invest more uh, resources on R&D to consolidate this area, especially the common cause failure, human factor, um, you know, uh, and other uh, software-based systems. So these kind of R&D can really benefit the uh, PRA and the plant in terms. Uh, specific criteria for ensuring the uh, level of completeness of this, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the list of initiating events should be as complete as possible. But that again extend to the system, uh, system safety analysis should also go to the component level and if, if required uh, from component level, uh, if uh, one way is if I got a component diesel generator set, I terminate my study there. But uh, the, uh, a, good, uh, a good practice says that, that why the diesel performed or not perform, which systems, subsystems were responsible, we have to do that study also and that should become part of it. So uh, it depends on the analysis or, or the management team, uh, the kind of the depth 
we need to go uh, while performing a PSA. Documentation and communication uh, results. Uh, these are uh, these are the uh, factors. They are not exhaustive. There are many more factors. Depends on the type of study that we do actually. So uh, quality attributes. Let us because this is a technical uh, component of the PRA. Uh, and here uh, I have taken this from IAEA standard. They have general attribute that uh, general attribute is. Uh, initiating event list should be as complete as possible. Okay. Now uh, there will be host of uh, special attri attributes. There will be host of special attributes uh, which we, we have to answer uh, how far we are meeting them. So that will say how we are meeting the general attribute. And there are ways to do that actually. The attribute are set of uh, at two level or three level. There could be one more level down if required. So the document will specify, um, uh, the analyst can make their checklist and they can see how far we are made, meeting this uh, uh, attributes. For each system, the checklist should be part of the, like if quality attributes are there with me and if I am doing an analysis for class uh, emergency power supply system and if I attach a list of attribute and I see how far I was able to address, address it, it is a very good practice uh, which help uh, the uh, among team team also uh, what is the quality level that we have achieved and it helps even the independent agency when they review it often the experience in quality attribute provides a guidance on source of strength and weakness in the final outco outcome of the analysis so uh, this is a very holistic picture that we have presented it, it may not be exhausted few more will be there but i have given an example from how international atomic energy or even uh, uh, these attributes uh, can be developed internally uh, uh, and you know uh, used uh, get approved from independent agency like regulators and finally used so it it, it works for everyone actually now um, we said there are two quality attributes a uh, quality uh, 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 is reflected at two levels one is at the technical level and other one is at assurance level so here we see here that uh, there are established uh, international and national guidance are available like uh, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, safety uh, guide uh, some some uh, guide and then a document determining the quality of PSA for application in nuclear plant from uh, from IAEA and this helps us to uh, structure or develop our technical quality attributes uh, for our uh, PSA. So left hand side how we get to technical quality and then on the uh, right side these are the guidance document that are available IAEA Tech Doc 1101 and they are available in public domain. In fact people can download the, all these documents as far as I know they can be downloaded and uh, the organizational PSA and procedure so they uh, can be implemented here and how far we are, we are able to ensure the Q, QA quality assurance program for our activity and then uh, from this we get one more thing uh, documentation to support review and future upgrades and finally a framework for quality assurance of PSA because IAA uses this term probabilistic safety assessment so I have not changed it. Uh, you can say uh, framework for quality assurance of PRA and uh, this source of this uh, particular uh, slide is IAA Tech Doc 1511. In fact, uh, later versions are also there, but I thought it proper to use it uh, um, in our this presentation because finally the idea was to go how QA program is implemented for a uh, PRA. Now, other documents which are there uh, have been uh, listed here. And this is basically for the sake of completion of this subject that is uh, quality attributes of PRA or organizational aspect of uh, PRA. So, we have uh, major two or three sources are there in here. Uh, one is International Atomic Energy, which is a main source uh, of the document. Then uh, we have uh, American Society for Mechanical Engineer and American Nuclear Society, US NRC Guide and, uh, and Nuclear Energy Agency. These are the four or five contribute and various scope of the documents um, have been uh, given on this side. So these are the list of the document and the year of the publication and then uh, what are their scope level 1 level 2 level 3 or uh, limited scope uh, so this is sort of ready rockner if uh, somebody uh, wants to take up this project so all the details are here um, yeah uh, you will find few more guides uh, which are uh, which are superseding uh, like ia tech doc 1511 
uh, I guess it has been superseded. Uh, so, um, if you give the title, it will it will come over there. Quality attributes of ARA, something like that. So, now uh, with this, uh, we take the stock or uh, recap what we have uh, what we have discussed. So, organizational and management aspect of PRA, PRA, significance of quality assurance program in PRA, which is which is uh, which is a spread out program. It goes outside of the group also, uh, and uh, if the program is followed, developed and followed in all sincerity, it will bring in the quality of and general quality assurance aspect has to be addressed. Then, then specific attributes of PSA, um, codes and standard and PRA stages and plan. Uh, so, uh, pre PRA stages and all uh, we have discussed and at what stage what is required that also form part of this presentation. So, it is sort of holistic in nature. Uh, in respect of organization activities of PRA and quality uh, assurance activities of uh, PRA. So, the few references are there here. Uh, probably you can see that these references, uh, most of the things have been reflected in our technical document uh, last uh, slide that we, we had here. And they are available in open domain. Uh, they can, of course, ASME and ANS uh, documents have to be bought. Um, otherwise, uh, most of the uh, IAEA documents, uh, if I'm, uh, and then some URC, US NRC documents are also even any NIA, NEA, Nuclear Energy Agency documents are also open in uh, public domain. There are some reports which are with the research center, but they work in uh, like Brookhaven, Brookhaven National Laboratory. They work for uh, US NRC. So, um, a search can be made keeping the title here and the documents can be obtained. Uh, in next lecture, we will be discussing the qualitative modeling of PRA. Thank you.